So now let's say you want to get messy and you want students to annotate. Um, so you're working on a problem and you want somebody to contribute um, or you're brainstorming ideas or you are playing a game all together and okay. Okay, so students are going to contribute and I'm going to give you guys a chance to kind of try it out, which it looks like somebody might have already. Um, here is where you can, right now, it's enabled. So right now, attendees can annotate on my whiteboard if they want to. I can also disable that. So if you don't want students to do that, then you would disable it from the more window. Um, I can show names of annotators. So now, if you would like to, go up to, uh, again, the same place you went for the side-by-side -side view. Mm -hmm. In that drop-down menu, it should say annotate and you should get an annotation bar that looks very similar to the one I have. And then go ahead and, excellent, add something to the window so I know you've got it. Where did you say that was? Click to the right of you are viewing um, Tiffany Spaulding's screen. Uh -huh. I think it says view options. Yes. And if you click on that, you should get something that says annotate. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, and you'll notice, play around with the different tools, you're not able to use all of them. You are not able to use the clear tool. Um, you're able to move things, but only before you click off of it. So if you're using the text tool and somebody starts to, um, or draws something underneath where you have done something, you can only move it while you're still typing it. How did I get that pretty color? I love it, but how did I do that? Uh, click on format. Format. It just did it. I didn't do that, but it's really pretty. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Look how beautiful. I think it automatically gives everyone a different color um, oh. default, um, just so that way for tracking purposes. But um, I could be wrong. This is the most we've used our whiteboard with, um, but I think that was the thinking behind it. So you just lucked out that your default was the pretty color. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite and you'll notice too that with the arrow tool um, like Liliana has one with her name in it if Liliana were to click somewhere else her arrow would move so the point of that is to say oh like here's where I did whatever um, so people know where you're pointing to so why would you use this <laughs> So you mean with students? Yeah. Um, I would use it, you could use it as a, a brainstorming tool. Um, you could use it if, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't, I would rarely have everybody annotating at the same time. Um, unless it's like a brainstorm, like, like a gallery walk, if you had image, um, actually, I don't know if you can upload images. I um, or if you're meeting before. with like a small group at some point, like the first few weeks of distance learning, right? Like we're just, we're just trying to connect with our kids and make sure that, you know, everyone's doing okay. And just, we're just getting our feet wet. But as you start thinking like maybe like three weeks from now or whatever, if you're starting to get like some projects starting to go and maybe you have like a small group or a book club or something that, you know, may, or like a small writing group or you want to do some skill practice or science thing or a math, um, a little math group on a skill, like then you might want to have everyone annotating because you're only meeting with like five kids, something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'd want to have, unless you're doing like a game or a full class thing, I don't know if I'd want to have 30 kids annotating no. at the same time. That sounds like, maybe like it might be a fun icebreaker, like one of the first times you connect with your kids, like, you know, this week or next week, but in general, probably not going to happen. <laughs> but I could see using it where, I mean, you'd have to, it, like, you know, like any, anytime you're establishing rules and routines with your class where even though they all have access to annotate at one time um, you might want to have them get it out of their system to try it out but after that establish you know if somebody's annotating it's not your turn that kind of thing um, but they could be explaining how they solved a problem um, they could um, you could have them if you're practicing like a um, a particular grammar rule and and they've come up with a sentence or something that that exemplifies it or a sentence structure or something like that they could type in their sentence that they they came up with 
Um, if you're using breakout rooms, which um, we've touched upon a little bit with Zoom, um, maybe the group is talking about something and they come back and, and one representative from each group types, you know, the sent a sentence that, that um, kind of sums up what they were talking about in the break breakout room to share with all the other groups. This would be really good for number talks for math too. So if you're doing like number corner type of stuff um, with your yes. kids, again, it's like you have to have those norms set up, right? Where, okay, annotation's open, but only so-and-so is going to contribute at this time. So, but what's nice is you can at least see then if, right, with that, when that, because you can have it so the names pop up, so you can at least see then if someone is annotating when they're not supposed to. Um, question, since we're all here annotating. Um, are you guys able to change pages or is it just me? It's just you, Tiffany. Okay. Just that. Was... It sure would be nice if you guys could, because then each kid could take a page or each group could take a page. Oh, well. <laughs> Who could have thought? Okay. Um, the other thing to be aware of, just so you know, is that it looks a little, the annotation tools look a little different on a tablet than they do on the um, computer. So if your students are using tablets that they have at home instead of a computer, their annotation tools will be at the bottom of the screen and they're hidden until they kind of hover over the bottom left and they'll see a pencil inside of a circle. Um, and they'll need to find that pencil <laughs> and the circle and click on it and then they'll see the same annotation tools and, the, and then they work the exact same way but it's just a matter of finding them it's a little bit different um, and the other thing um, just as a side note it's a little bit different but students you can make it so students can share their own um, can also share a whiteboard of their own and one thing we discovered is that for everyone who shares a whiteboard, that whiteboard is, is saved separately. Um, and it's saved, well, at least until the end of the, until you end the meeting. So if I were to now have Misty share her whiteboard, mine will go away. But if I bring it up again, all these lovely annotations will show up again as well. Um, so if you do have students sharing their whiteboards, um, just so you know, you can have multiple whiteboards going on at one time. Um, but um, you probably want to disable that unless you're sure you want students <laughs> sharing screens. I think, did I forget anything? I think that's all. Um, you are not able to turn annotations on for just one participant. It's all or nothing. So you would definitely need to teach some protocols with how to use that with students. Anything? Yeah. Oh, that was a question. Okay, if there are no questions about that, um, Oh, and then you'll need to hit stop record. One thing I did not mention was that when you go to record, it's going to ask you whether you, they want, you want to record it and have it save it in the cloud or on your local computer. Um, because we have basic accounts right now and not paid accounts, you should probably save to your computer because we have limited cloud storage space. So you might run out or you might lose them. Um, so it's best just to save to your computer if you are recording it.